Well, on Friday, the eagerly anticipated ANC Free State Provincial Electoral Meeting was meant to begin in Mangaung. After disgruntled members disrupted the registration process, the elective conference was delayed to give time to resolve delegates' grievances. For more on this and what we can expect this morning as the proceedings commence, we're joined by Professor Brian Nageri, who is with the Strategic Dialogue Group in the Free State. Prof, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us on the Weekend Report this morning. You know, just looking at those chaotic scenes outside the Pietras Mulamela uh, stadium precinct uh, yesterday, it's clear that we're not just seeing fissures uh, within the ANC anymore, really. Uh, some would argue that what we're witnessing is an organization that is truly at war with itself. See, uh, the, the frustrations demonstrated by the delegates, uh, it's a reflection of weaknesses of the structures of uh, the ANC uh, because you can see that at branch levels and maybe other levels too, uh, there is a clear gap of uh, coordination and processing of uh, administrative procedures leading to participation at uh, such an important event. Uh, and also, noticeably, you can see that there is also a poverty of uh, quality of membership within the organization, uh, much as there is also a poverty of leadership, uh, because issues uh, such as this do not really have to erupt as they are. Uh, you would have dealt with uh, such adequately to a point where you've got a seamless process that leads to uh, the engagement of uh, the business of politics within the, the structures. So, so we are at, at where we are, and um, uh, we must just observe what's going to happen. Uh, Prof, I mean, if we are to take uh, your assertion for, for what it is, you're essentially saying that this was purely, you know, an administrative failure, uh, that the failure to plan properly, to account properly, is, is essentially what we saw yesterday. Are you saying that, you know, the fact that this is a, an ANC that is deeply factionalized is not something that's playing out in a lot of these uh, provincial elective conferences that we witnessed last year in the lead up to the national elective conference, but certainly what we're witnessing playing out in the free state as well? See, uh, the free state particularly, we are at, at, at a level where we need to review our own approach towards the the ANC politics, because clearly we seem to have uh, abandoned uh, the culture and ethos of the organization, and we need to work hard uh, towards ensuring that we, we regain uh, that kind of political knowledge uh, so our participation can be better informed uh, uh, with a view to actually uh, address issues that affect our constituencies. Well, let's talk around some of the outstanding issues that uh, need to be addressed at this particular conference. What would you say, delegates who, uh, you know, once registration processes finally get underway, what are some of the pressing issues that delegates absolutely need to handle and get out of the way at this particular conference? See, uh, what needs to happen uh, in a proper conference of this uh, uh, organization, you would have expected that uh, policy issues would become uh, uh, addressed as a priority, but also, you know, in relation to governance, issues of service delivery, uh, the, the entire, you know, uh, organizational political life as it is in the current state, uh, to begin to also uh, expose members to understand, for an example, how uh, the district model of governance has to work for the benefit of uh, our, our, our people on the ground, the voting districts. Mm -hmm. However, the mood uh, always determines what happens. And we hope that with the interventions that is, is, is there uh, from, from the NEC, we will be able to see a conference that uh, attempts to address these issues. However, we must also concede that uh, the quality of membership 
is such that, you know, uh, without really uh, talking down on any individual member of the ANC, but take your chance and ask one particular member from a branch, what is the, the first loss of the Freedom Charter? You may, you may struggle a bit. So we are dealing with those kind of issues, and hence it is critical going forward to maybe, you know, advise the incoming leadership to try and work with the Veterans League, SDG, and so on, you know, uh, uh, find a platform where maybe the alliance could, uh, with other, uh, you know, partners, uh, come and, you know, assist in terms of reviving the political culture of the ANC in the first state. Yeah. You keep raising this issue, Prof, around the quality of membership within the African National Congress. What are leaders in the organization saying about their own members? What are they saying about their own people? What exactly is uh, at issue or at fault when it comes to the quality of the members within the ANC? So when we recruit uh, members into uh, our branches as members of the ANC, uh, there is a need to take them through uh, what the organization is all about, to actually uh, teach them that you are volunteering to come and uh, provide your, your, your time, your resources in terms of human resources, your, your engagements and so on, to learn about what the ANC is all about, you know, and uh, make sure that they go through the mills. Because you do often find some members who are proudly, you know, uh, uh, so to tell that, you know, they have just gone through up and they never became ordinary members of the BEC. They joined and they became chairperson of the BECs. And really, that's not acceptable for, for, for the kind of organization that the ANC is. The ANC represents so many people and aspirations of our people. So we cannot take a chance to just bring in members for the sake of numbers so we get the right numbers of delegates to conferences. I think it's, it's, it's uh, really not acceptable. Yeah. I mean, you're questioning the quality of, you know, the, the members within the African National Congress. On Monday, we have the Democratic Alliance uh, heading to court uh, on the issue of cadre deployment. They seem to believe that the rot um, in government at the heart of ESCOM lies with, you know, the, the, the quality of individuals deployed uh, to run those state entities. Is there a correlation there? Are you in some, to a certain degree, in agreement that this issue around cadre deployment, the quality of members within the organization, is something that absolutely needs to be taken a look at uh, a lot more closely? So the DA is a different party altogether with uh, their own liberal democracy that is uh, often suspect of how it addresses issues on a non-racial basis. Uh, from, from where we are standing, the ANC, all that uh, they need to do is to ensure that the policies are adhered to. If you talk about a cadre deployment, it must be given a proper meaning of what that is, not a, a, a meaning that relates to a given opportunity to a friend or, or, or a relative mm. or, or someone who you could you know, uh, uh, do business with. But to ensure that as we move along within uh, the ranks of the ANC, we recognize talent, we recognize people who are capable and uh, who have the capacity to go and do the, the job where, you know, uh, they are actually deployed. So there is nothing wrong with deployment except that it has got to be done properly and given the, 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 the right meaning and context. All right. Well, getting back to the conference itself, uh, are you confident that it will be able to uh, get well underway, um, given the divisions that we certainly witnessed uh, taking center stage yesterday, um, and certainly some of the historical divisions that have been highlighted in a, a lot of the conversations around what we witnessed yesterday. We are hoping that uh, this will be a transitional mo moment for the ANC, with a view to, to go back and, and see how best we can uh, go back to the branches and rebuild the organization properly without uh, a hurry for, 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 for this and that. Uh, and as you suggest, it is a reflection of the legacy of more than 10, 15 or 20 years uh, that we are living with. So it's a culture uh, that is, is within, uh, you know, uh, us, that, that DNA is still there. We need to, to really uh, discard it from, from our political veins and see how best we can begin to honestly 
and with ethical understanding what the ANC is, is all about. It's not about us as individuals. It's not about what we are going to benefit from the ANC. It's not about feeling that uh, some would come and, you know, uh, if you like, uh, uh, block us from what we want to achieve uh, for ourselves and so on. The ANC is an organization of the people of South Africa. Yeah. Do you get the sense, though, that, that members at branch level are understanding the urgency of the repeated call for unity and renewal? Uh, I mean, 2023, this is the penultimate year before we head into general elections next year. The optics of what we continue to see at these elective conferences uh, surely cannot bode well for an organization that is trying to put its best foot forward when it comes to convincing voters that the ANC should be their party of choice. So the, the ANC leadership itself should really uh, uh, lead from the front and uh, adhere to democratic centralism as it goes around and about trying to ensure that at branch levels you do not have, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> individual supporters for certain leaders, but you have members of the ANC who understands what the ANC stands for, who understands the culture of the ANC, and who really appreciate the, 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 the mammoth task that is faced by the ANC at the moment. And that can only be achieved by recognizing competencies, capabilities, and, and, and uh, understanding of, of uh, what the ANC is at a branch level. Without that, uh, we run a risk of, of really uh, uh, going astray. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time. That is a Professor Brian Nagedu, who is with the Strategic Dialogue Group in the Free State. Up